you done now? Oh, Brad, what have you done now? As they said in the film, Back to the Future, where are we going? We don't need roads. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me you built a time machine? Kind of a DeLorean? Marty! You've got to come back with me! Where? Back to the future! Hello, everybody, and welcome to Back to the Future, the podcast, the only podcast looking back in time at the greatest film trilogy of all time, Back to the Future. I'm your friend in time, Brad Gilmore. We got a great show for y'all today. We have Jason from Back to the Future HQ, which is a social media account that posts all things Back to the Future. And Jason was kind enough to give us an, almost an hour of his time to uh, talk about the greatest film trilogy of all time, to talk about his memories of Back to the Future, his love of Back to the Future, and a lot of the cool moments and stories that he has learned and, and experiences that he's had since running the social media page. It's kind of similar to my story in a lot of ways. You know, I never thought when I started this I would have all the opportunities that I've had and uh, Jason's similar story. So we get to um, talk to each other about that and, and about a lot of things back to the future, about the DeLorean, our favorite DeLorean, our favorite Characters from the movies, which is our favorite movie? Uh, what would we think about a potential remake or reboot of Back to the Future? We talk about it all here, so I just want to throw it over to Jason. But before I do, I want to take this opportunity to remind everybody that I have a book about Back to the Future. Yes, and it's coming out April the 14th, and you can pre-order it right now on Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, IndieBound.com, or BackFromTheFutureBook.com. The book is called Back from the Future. A celebration of the greatest time travel story ever told. And it is available again April the 14th. Pre-order it now for me. We had a great week in the in the uh, last week when I announced the project. And a lot of love from a lot of you pinheads all around the world. So do me a favor. Go uh, check out the book. Go check out all the other episodes of this podcast. And go check out Back to the Future HQ. Jason does a great job. And we're going to talk to Jason right now. And I'm so happy to have him on the line with me right now. I'm sure you've seen his social media posts on, on Twitter or Instagram or wherever you find your Back to the Future social media. He is Jason from Back to the Future HQ. Jason, how you doing, man? I'm doing fabulous, Brad. I appreciate you having me on. And before we get into it, I'd just like to say congratulations on the book. I am excited to read it and, uh, and add it to the collection. So, hey, thank you, man. Thank you, man. I'm 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 really excited about it. You know, uh, it was a lot of good feedback so far um, from the people who've been able to to, to read it and and and, and you know uh, share some thoughts on it. So I'm excited and I appreciate your support and your posting uh, of it as well. Um, it's it's crazy. It's almost it's almost here. It's in just a couple months. So uh, I appreciate it. But man, let's talk about you, dude. I mean. Your um your Back to the Future love goes as deep as anybody's, and Back to the Future HQ is actually something that I've checked into, uh, especially on Twitter a lot, and I, I've seen your post and some of the back behind the scenes pictures and, and images that you post up are just awesome. So tell me about you know where your love for Back to the Future started. Started when I was younger. I actually grew up in a small town uh, in Indiana, Warsaw, Indiana, which oddly enough is the orthopedic capital of the world. You know, anybody needs a fake knee or a fake hip, it, it came from Warsaw, Indiana. So, uh, there you go. a fantastic place to grow up uh, in Indiana. Obviously, basketball and cornfields, that was the major part of my life growing up. Um, and I was fortunate enough to, to play in high school and then uh, my freshman year of college. But I just always was a fan of Back to the Future. Uh, you know, watching it uh, back then, it was just VHS tapes. So, you know, popping in each one, one, two, and three. And then one of the girls I was I dated all through high school uh, for one of the Christmases, she had put all three on one VHS tape. So that I just love that because I was like, well, that's going to save me so much time. Um, <laughs> and back then, uh, you know, it was bad. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I was lucky enough to have a television set and a VCR in my bedroom. Thank you, mother. Um, and I would fall asleep to Back to the Future, either one, two, or three every single night all through high school. Um, so for me, I think it was something, you know, looking back now uh, as a 41 year old adult, it was probably one of those things like it was a security blanket almost. It made me feel good. Uh, and it still does obviously to this day. I mean, it's, it's always been something that's not been far from my mind. So that's kind of how it all started for me. 
um, my love of Back to the Future. So you saw him. You saw him when you were younger. I think you know a lot of us. That's when we fell in love with the films, especially me. I, I mean, I saw him on the Disney Channel like back in the day for the first time. Um, what, did, were you were you able to ever experience him inside the theater or no? I was, and I mean, it's you know, it's it's vague, but of course, uh, as far as the original one that came out, you know, in eighty five, eighty six, uh, but then the subsequent ones, which you know, uh, eighty nine, ninety. Of course, I remember those. Uh, and my mother, actually, I can remember my mother taking me you know, down uh, to Universal Studios, Florida. And obviously as a kid, I mean, does it get any better than that? And, uh, you know, what they've done now, unfortunately they don't have the ride anymore, yeah. uh, which, which is a shame, but, um, uh, you know, of course, yeah. Seeing all that as a child and, and having those memories, um, you know, did you get to ride the ride? I don't think that I did. I don't remember if, if that's, that's the case. I'll say that a uh, funny story though. I have ridden the ride, as it's now the Simpsons, they have the, they use the exact same cars. Uh, you can, you know, they have the doors that open the, the way that they used to, and they've just repainted them. So anybody, uh, you know, if you're, if you're, you're going uh, and riding the Simpsons ride, you're literally riding these same cars that they use for back to the future. They just repainted them. God, man. So. I, I always thought that it was such a, wasn't that like a weird choice to move from back to the future, the Simpsons, not, not that the Simpsons isn't a beloved franchise and television series that has been on and probably will be on longer than you and I will be alive. But I mean, yep. back, come on, Back to the Future as a movie property, I think has more of a draw than The Simpsons. And, you know, obviously you and I are probably a bit biased, but it, that's kind of what one of the things that's always, I guess, bothered me about the Universal Parks is they don't really care about the history of the film. They just move on to the next thing that's going to make them money. You know, we'll get rid of Jaws, we'll get it rid of Kong, we'll get rid of Back to the Future. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah, I think that's a, a little bit about what it was. And then also, you know, I don't think they actually knew how rabid Back to the Future fans were going to be much later after the movie came out. You know, at, at that time, they figured, let's move away. The Simpsons will be a huge draw, you know, for the entire family. So they went that route. And then now seeing, uh, you know, kind of how things have just transpired. And even to this day, I mean, you look at the 25th anniversary and now uh, 30th anniversary and now the 35th anniversary and just how crazy things are. I mean, I'm seeing new things, you know, come out every day, whether it be diecast models or whether it be, uh, you know, just magazines or, or things online or apps or flux capacitors, or it's just, yeah. it's, it's really taking on a life of itself. And now I think they've particularly back, you know, in the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, all those cars were just sitting outside on the universal lot being neglected. And then thankfully, you know, Joe Wallace or Bob Gale, they created that team and they, they, they uh, you know, redid the, the DeLorean time machine, the A-car, and now it's uh, sitting beautifully in the Peterson Museum. So I think that got universal thinking um, that, hey, we should we should probably start taking care of more of these. And um, But it is a shame. I would love for them to, to have another Back to the Future ride, but you never know. You never know. I mean, the films, I feel like they get more popular as the years pass. Like with every passing year, like you said, every anniversary celebration, it seems like there's more – uh, a manic fandom out there, so maybe maybe they'll change their mind. We 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 only can hope though that they eventually change their mind. You know, you you talked a, a little bit about um, getting able to to see these movies. You know, when, when you're young, um, what what do you think it was that made them stick with you? Like it stuck with so many of us. Well, it's just a crazy story for the time. I mean, you look back then when it was written. I mean, you know, time travel movies I've always thought were cool. And I, I'm an engineer. I've been an engineer my entire adult life. Um, which is in its in its own right is is fun and, and exciting and fantastic and you get to work on you know, different things and see how they how they're made and, and how they're engineered. Um, but I also had a chance. Uh, I was an aerospace engineer with the Department of Defense uh, for quite a while, and you know you'd be surprised at how many people. I feel like there's a Doc Brown in all of us, uh, particularly for engineers. So uh, you know, looking back, because uh, engineers we just love to tear things apart and see how they work, and. Uh, so that's why, you know, I've always just loved the Doc Brown take on things. And um, that's kind of, you know, where everything I think has come for me. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that um, it's funny that you, you say that it's the Doc Brown of it all. Because I feel like when you're a kid, Marty McFly is definitely the one that, that you would think that most people would gravitate to. And most people did. But for me, man, it was always Doc Brown. Doc Brown was always my favorite character. I don't know if it was because of Chris's, Chris Lloyd's performance or just the way that the character was written. He always, for some reason, I connected with him even more than somebody who was more of my contemporary, at least on you know in the in the cinematic universe, being Marty McFly as a young man. Did was Doc always the one who stood out for you? 
he was, but I, I mean, of course, I mean, Marty McFly, you know, the skateboard, I had a skateboard. I think most of us did when we were younger. Um, so I always loved Marty, but it, I think it was later on in life. And I say later on in life, uh, you know, after graduating college and deciding, you know, which profession I was going to go into, I think that's when it, it more started as far as the Doc Brown approach uh, to saying things as, you know, as an engineer. I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what he was. He was a scientist, but he was also an engineer, you know, looking at all the things uh, that he discovered and all the things that he invented. So, yeah, I think, again, it was probably later on in life when I really kind of honed in a little bit more uh, with the Doc Brown approach. Uh, because as a kid, I mean, everybody's just, uh, uh, you know, kind of running around like Marty McFly with a skateboard, kind of not giving, uh, you know, a crap about what other people think. So. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I hear you. Well, I want to get back to the movies in a second, but let's talk about a little bit more about your story. Back to the Future HQ, like I said, if you're a Back to the Future fan on <clears throat> social media, you've come across your page in one way, shape, or form. Um, what was the impetus for starting this Back to the Future HQ? Did you see like a lack of Back to the Future coverage? Or, or I mean, really, what was what was the idea behind it? Why did you think that I need to start this up? It was a little bit of that. And certainly, you know, with all due respect to Stephen Clark, because uh, Stephen Clark, who runs, you know, the Back to the Future official Back to the Future page and all of that, I think he does a tremendous job. And he has done it, you know, ever since he started the original BTTF.com, which then led into Back to the Future.com. He is such a wealth of knowledge, and I, I know you've had him on your show before, uh, the podcast. You know, he's such a wealth of knowledge for the community. He just knows so much. I mean, as somebody as myself who thinks they know a lot about Back to the Future, I mean, he just he, – he still blows me away with things. Uh, he'll correct me even on social media. Hey, you know, actually, it wasn't this. It was this. And I, 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 I appreciate it uh, as much as he's willing to give it, to be fair. Um, but yeah, there, there was just, I think people have just been craving for more back to the future content. And I wasn't necessarily thinking that I could be the one to provide it, but I was like, well, let me, you know, I'll start a page and I'll, I'll post more than most people and see what comes of it. And then once I started posting, I was like, wow, I really started spending a little bit more time digging, uh, researching for, you know, never before seen photos or photos that just or maybe necessarily as widespread to the public that maybe they haven't seen. And then once a few things, you know, started rolling, I started getting more followers. Then I just started having people send me pictures. I, I probably get, I don't know, 500 to a thousand pictures a week sent to me. I mean, it is just, it's rabid and people just want to be part of it. Uh, whether they're making a meme or whether they're, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, showing you, I mean, I get people in their stories watching back to the feature on Instagram and then filming it and then sending it to me and, you know, I do my best to post as much of that on my story that I can of them. And I mean, sending me, uh, you name it, uh, you know, I created a t-shirt or a, a magnet or, I mean, it's, it's, it really has almost taken on a life of its own, which is great. And, and today actually I, I just hit uh 59,500 wow. followers, which officially put me as the largest and most followed back to the future page on Instagram. So, wow, that's incredible, man. Congratulations on that. And, and it, it, and here's the thing. I've been a lifelong fan of these movies. As I'm talking to you, yep. I'm looking at a shelf in my office that has all kinds of Back to the Future paraphernalia you know, on it, all kinds of merch, all kinds of collectibles. And I, you would think that I had seen everything. But it was on your page the other day. It was like this, um, a picture of the time train time circuits, uh, I believe. is where I think I saw it on your, on your page. And I've never seen that. I've never seen that as, as long as I've been a Back to the Future fan. And it's just really cool to know that there's still things out there that even I, you who've hosted this podcast, or, or you who, who've done the page, uh, still don't know about. And and to echo real quick, to echo your sentiments about Stephen Clark, that guy is an incredible wealth of knowledge. And I yes. think that he should be credited for so much in keeping Back to the Future alive. I mean, I, I mean as much as the movies do, and you know, Stephen, I know works a lot on on the merch stuff and 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 getting that out to the people and selling it on on his website on, on the website rather, backtothefuture dot com. And he is so responsible, whether he knows it or not, and I'm sure that you'd agree, he's so responsible for continuing uh, of of Back to the Future of of the franchise out there. And you know, I just got to give major love to Stephen Clark. So you, so you have sixty thousand people, um, and 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 you have this massive platform what who are some of the cool people that you've gotten to i don't know get in touch with you know like, like for me I've, I've gotten to talk to so many people from the film you know crispin glover yeah. jeffrey wiseman claudia wells just to name a couple uh, who, who have you been able who have you talked to or, or been in contact with where you're like wow i can't believe i'm talking to so and so 
I think, you know, I mean, there's certainly been several. And as this, I think we had talked, you know, before we had started the podcast, it's it's kind of, you know, this year being the 35th anniversary, I'm, gonna, I'm having a lot of opportunities, uh, you know, later on in the year, uh, which we'll be posting about, you know, as they come up, uh, not to give any spoiler alerts or anything. But, you know, I, I, I was fortunate enough, I was in L.A., a year ago with now my fiance at the time, uh, my girlfriend, and we'd stopped in uh, Claudia Wells' shop. And she's messaged me a few times on social media or whatnot. Uh, but I walked in and we started talking. She's like, oh, you're DJ, Jason, you're Jason from Back to Future HQ. And, you know, just she lit up and we, we spent a, probably about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, she kept, you know, Comment, my girlfriend. Oh my gosh, you're so gorgeous. Your skin. Why haven't you proposed? Um, and and you know, funny thing is, is she has a a, a a jewelry store. Her friend owns a jewelry store, several blocks. And she goes, you have to go, you have to go. So she sends me to her jeweler down, you know, down the road to, to look at rings for my uh, for my girlfriend again, who is now my fiance. I did buy a ring at that time. Um, and, and I have, you know, Claudia and I we exchange text messages every now and again. I mean, do you have her phone number? Um, she's, she's fantastic. She is fantastic for the franchise. You know, she, everybody is, I, I can't, you know, really want to single one person out. I think everybody, uh, really does a good job, uh, that is still, uh, you know, uh, in the public eye and, uh, you know, from the cast, they, they all do a fantastic job. She really does go above and beyond, um, no, no matter what it is when it comes to the back to the future stuff. So she's been fantastic. Um, I've gotten to, to, to know Joe Walser a little bit as well. I, he's, He's messaged me, private messaged me a few times, like, man, where did you find that picture? And coming from Joe Walzer, who, you know, kind of was responsible for restoring the A-car, that means a lot. Uh, and it, again, it's it's weird where I find some of these pictures. It really is. But it's a lot of digging and a lot of getting lucky, I think. But Joe Walzer has been a big one. Uh, he's fantastic. And, um, you know, Jeffrey Wiseman, I've, I've certainly spoken to him a few times. And one of the one of the cooler ones is, is Dangerous Bob. If anybody is familiar with Dangerous Bob, he he was a prop master on all of the Back to the Futures. And as a matter of fact, I I just had a, a phone call, about an hour long phone call with him, just over a week ago. Um, and we were just talking. Um, I'm going to be in LA in April, so I'm, I'm hoping maybe him and I are going to get together. But you know, he he just has so many behind the scenes stories from Back to the Future that it's amazing. And for anybody that, that follows, he's, he's only on Facebook, but for anybody that follows back to future HQ on, on Facebook, the page, please go through the comment sections when I post pictures, because he'll come in there and just be like, Oh yeah, I remember that day I gave Michael J. Fox, uh, you know, uh, that beer that's in his hand, or he'll, he'll just start telling stories that most people have never heard a day in their life. And, you know, I mean, how lucky are we to have somebody like that, want to give us that information and, and real quick, I'll, I'll just tell you a quick story from the first movie, you know, at the end of it, when, when doc comes in with the, with the car that had been fixed up, you know, like, you know, with the, uh, you know, the Mr. Fusion and all that, when they were getting ready to film that scene, Bob Gale wanted to use, uh, he wanted to use real trash in it and, and dangerous. Bob's like, no, 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 we can't use real trash. It'll take too long to clean it up. And you know, we may have to change the clothing of the actors and whatnot. But they both looked down at the license plate in the back of the car, and it still had the out of time. And they both looked up at each other, and and, and a light bulb came on and said, "Oh no, you know, we he's not going to drive that in the future. It's not going to have the out of time license plate. It's going to have something more futuristic. What do we do?" And uh, Bob had said, "Hey, you know what? Dangerous, Bob. I should say not Bob Gale. He said, I've got these Science Digest magazines that I read. <laughs> he said, um, you know, I, I was reading about these 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 codes that they're going to be using on cars." Uh, they're talking about using where a police officer is, if they pull you over, they just scan the code and you, you know, you get a ticket quick. It's over with. He goes, maybe, maybe I do something like that. Um, and it was lunch. So Bob said, Bob Gill said, go, you go and, and mock something up and bring it back. You know, we're, we're about to you know, film this scene here coming up. So off dangerous Bob goes, mocks up the, the bar. What we now know is the barcode license plate comes back with it. They use that for that scene. And then uh, obviously on subsequent movies, they had some made up. So, I mean, it's just little stories like that that are just unbelievable. Wow, that is that is like a great little nugget, little kernel of information that you can only get. And that's the thing, like, I feel like there's so many great stories that are still out there that haven't been told or, or explored yeah. more about Back to the Future. And, and I, I think that was even a thing for me to even start this podcast is to have a, another platform where I can talk to people like you or even people from the films. I would love to talk to Dangerous Bob one day and, and just get some of those small little kernels of, of, of fact 
or, or stories that, that haven't been heard yet. And that, that's a phenomenal one right there. Um, when, when, when you, when you talk to these people, do you ever have that? Like, like, cause I know I do. Do you ever have that moment where you're like, wow, am I really like, we're having a full on conversation about like my favorite franchise ever. Yeah. I mean, I come home and like I said, when I, when I, you know, fortunately when I met Claudia, I mean, my girlfriend was with me, so she kind of saw the excitement and, and everything, but you know, with dangerous Bob, I got the phone and then I got home and then my, you know, my fiance came home and my fiance is not, you know, the biggest back to the future fan in the world. She does her own thing, but she's extremely happy that I have my own thing. You know, there could be worse things in the world that I, that I'm in love with. Uh, and back to the future is certainly uh, one for me. And so she just, she loved hearing how excited I was and just how lucky I was to be able to talk to him. And, you know, one of the more prouder moments of, of me just being a fan, and this was early on when I started HQ, um, you know, the, the car that, uh, that had been destroyed at the end of, of the movie and that they had tacked back together in Planet Hollywood had hanging, um, for the longest time up in uh, Planet Hollywood. I think it was, it was in Hawaii. Well, nobody, nobody had known what happened to that car. And it got me thinking, I'm like, I wonder where this car is. I wonder if I can track it down. So I spent the better part of a week getting in touch with people at Planet Hollywood. I mean, you know, 20, 30 minute phone calls, this, that, and the other thing. And, uh, I found it. They, they were like, yes, we found it for you. It's here. What more would you like to know about it? And I'm just like, holy cow. Um, so I, I went ahead and contacted Joe Walser and said, Hey, this is kind of what happened. I don't know. I I'm a nobody. I can't really do much about it, but I would love for this thing to just be out in the public so people can see it. Um, you know, maybe there's something that can be done. So he passed that, that information along to, uh, to Bob Gale. And then, you know, several months later, it's up for auction and, uh, Bill Shea, if you're familiar with Bill Shea, ended up purchasing it. So, wow. um, for me to have just a small part, um, probably more of a small part, uh, I mean, I would like to give myself a little credit, but you know, just being able to help find that, you know, that car, if you want to call it a car, um, and then now again, the Shays, uh, they, that they own it. And if you're not familiar with uh, Bill and Patrick Shea, they, they own the only car used in the movie that's in private hands or public hands, if you want to call it that, uh, from the third movie. They also own Doc's, the yellow car that Doc has. Uh, I mean, uh, matter of fact, uh, yeah, one of their cars is in the, uh, the Hollywood Museum right now, the Back to the Future exhibit that they have going on right now. They own a ton of screen use stuff. They are amazing. Uh, you know, they invite so many fans into their home and garage to just look at these uh, screen use relics. Uh, I mean, they are fantastic as well. Yeah, yeah, that that that's an awesome. That's that's it's just an awesome thing to even know that you had like a small part in 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 bringing that to somebody. Um, you talk about the uh, exhibit that's in L.A. Have you been over there yet? I have been. Uh, well, the uh, the Hollywood Museum exhibit that just opened. No, I've not been to that one yet. I've been obviously been to the Peterson Museum and I've seen the ACAR, uh, but I've not been to the new one that was just released. So I'm excited. I'll be in L.A. in April for four or five days, certainly have some back to the future things I have planned that I'm going to do while I'm out there. Hopefully, maybe possibly, uh, as we discussed, maybe have a little mini meetup for some back to the future fans that are out there with possibly a few, uh, replica DeLorean time machines. Um, but one of, one of the big things is certainly getting to the Hollywood museum and seeing that setup. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I I've been like now I've been in LA twice since it's open, but I haven't been able to make it out there. Cause I just have like such a tight window for the things that I'm doing, but I plan on making a special trip. I think just to go and take in that museum because I've seen some of the pictures and videos of stuff that's there and you know, just the amount of, of behind the scenes and screen used props and stuff is just, is just incredible. What, what is your personal back to the future collection look like? Um, it's scary. I've got a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting married in June and we're in the process of looking for a new home. Yeah. And I live downtown Chicago. I mean, I live in a, in a high rise condo. So you can imagine there's not a lot of room. So I have a lot of my stuff in storage. So I'm very excited. But, I mean, I've got some, some amazing pieces. Joel Wolf, Wolfer was kind enough uh, to get me one of the, I don't know if you've seen the shadow boxes with, you know, when they restored the eight car, they sold off some of those parts from the actual car for charity. And he made a nice little display box. So I, that's a, an amazing uh, piece that I have. So I do have pieces from the actual A card that are in the wow. shadow box oh, signed man. by Joe Walzer. That's, yeah, that's an amazing uh, piece that I have. Um, I actually just recently found a T-shirt that was given to cast and crew. A, a, a store in L.A. had it. It was a vintage store selling T-shirts. And thankfully, I had a good eye. I've seen it before, actually, from Dangerous Bob. 
Uh, I picked up the shirt and then I sent him the pictures of it. There's certain telltale signs that I really don't want to give out so that people don't, you know, reproduce them. But, um, you know, so I sent him the pictures and he says, you've got a great eye, Jason. He goes, yeah, that was one of the very few shirts that were given to cast and crew. So um, he's actually sending me a certificate of authenticity, uh, you know, just so that I can have it displayed with the shirt. I'm having it framed up really nicely. Um, I mean, I'm just much like you. I've, I've got die cast cars and, newspapers and uh, books and replica Nike Air mags that are just out of this world. Amazing. I mean, what they can do nowadays, you know, I don't quite have the, the money for a 15 or $20,000 pair of shoes, but the, the replicas that they can make now are just, they look exactly like the real thing. So I've got a pair of those that are just, you know, they, they turn heads, although I don't, I don't wear them out. They stay on a, on a shelf, but uh, autograph posters and hoverboard and, uh, probably much of the same things that you have. I'm, a, I'm literally acquiring things uh, almost daily, and I'm sorry uh, for my fiance that you're going to listen to this. But yes, <laughs> it's almost daily or weekly. I'm acquiring new things. So. Yeah, I'm like you. I go on eBay, I go on Amazon, I go on the websites, and I just search Back to the Future and just see what I can find. I mean, that's how I've actually found you know a lot of the guests on this podcast. Like I, I, I didn't know about the um, William Shakespeare's Get Thee Back to the Future until I stumbled across it on on Amazon. So I was like, Oh man, I got to talk to the guy who wrote that. I got to talk to this person, that person. Um, I I mean, for me, I think the Pepsi perfect is high up there that I was able to be one of the, one of the lucky ones on the, on the second go around to procure that, um, Pepsi perfect. That, that was one of the, one of the cool ones that I have, but I I think that I don't have a piece from the a car. So, So I think that that that's probably the coolest thing. And do you have that one in your house right now? Or is that one in storage? Oh yes, it's beside my bed. <laughs> it's oh, on that, the you got to shoot me a picture. Of that. Uh, I got to see it. I'm I, I'm happy to send you a picture, but yeah, it's pretty cool. I don't I don't know if that's Joe how many they came out with, um, but they you know again it was for charity. They raised some good money um, for the back to I believe it was for the back to uh, or I'm sorry the, the Fox Foundation. I, I think that's uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that was who it was for. But again, Joe's Joe's again another wealth of knowledge, much like Stephen Clark and Bob Gale. Bob Gale is just—I mean, I can't say enough good things about Bob Gale. Uh, you know, writer, producer, but the the time he gives back towards the movie, you know, is, is kind of unheard of. Uh, I think nowadays. So you know, with him as well, it's you know, it's crazy. Have Have you gotten to talk to Bob Gale at all? I've never talked to him on the phone, you know, uh, much of, excuse me, much of my discussions back and forth, anything between him is mostly through Joel Walls or although I, I do have, again, I, I can't, I don't spill anything, but I have a, a feeling that's probably going to change this year uh, with some of the events that I'm already involved in coming up, um, with again, uh, different companies and different things that are happening that Bob is involved in, um, uh, that they've reached out and that I'm also going to be involved in. So, um, I know that'll certainly be changing and, and I'm, I'm again, over the moon excited, uh, to meet him and then finally being, I've never met Michael J. Fox. So being able to meet Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd, uh, later this year, I am, you know, over the moon, uh, excited for that. It should be an interesting time. Yeah. I, I can't imagine, you know, I can't imagine. So for me, like the reasons, you know, obviously I always love the movies, but the reasons why they, they've become even closer to me is my grandmother was diagnosed with Parkinson's back in the early, uh, two thousands. And she since passed away from it. And like for Michael J. Fox, all the work that he's done with the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research has just been incredible. And he's always a guy who I just want to shake his hand one day and just thank him for all the research that he's done. Um, well, we've talked we've talked a lot about um, some of the props that you have and the reasons for starting up the page. And the page again is Back to the Future HQ. You can find it on any social media site. It's phenomenal. Uh, if you're a fan at all, if you listen to this podcast and you don't follow, I don't, I don't understand what's going on. You got to go over there and do it right now. We got to get him to 60,000 after this interview drops. But um, talk to me about <laughs> what, which, which of the three films is your favorite? Now, this is a thing that is kind of hard. It's almost like when you talk about the greats in basketball, you talk about the best rapper alive or what have you. It's a debate that's always fluid for me at least like sometimes it's back to the future one sometimes it's three sometimes it's two it you ask me on any given day my opinion changes when i was a kid for some reason back to the future three i always really enjoyed what about you is back to the future one at the top of your list or, or how do you rank them in your mind i think everybody wanted to play cowboys and indians when they were a kid right so right, yeah. uh you know everybody wanted to, to kind of have that adventure and for me, and, and I'm not sure why a lot of people bash the third one, you know, and I get it from fans or in people who just are, you know, have seen the movies. Oh yeah. The first two were good, but the third one stuck. I'm like, what are you, it, it ties everything together. Now for me, I mean, I, how can you not love the first one? But right. what I love about the second one that they had an opportunity to do, 
And if, if you've not, if nobody's ever had an opportunity, obviously, to go into some of the special features that the DVDs have uh, that talk about the making of Back to the Future, run, pop in the DVD and watch it because they discuss, you know, how they had that unique opportunity where they could make the second movie but go into the first movie. It was never, it has never been done. So, you know, from an engineering standpoint, in, in my mind, I'm like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. That they looked, they went into the first movie. It just, it blew my mind. It still blows my mind, you know, with, with how they did that. And I love, you know, obviously the hoverboard and like your mags. And the, I wish they would have spent a little more time in 2015. I think that was, uh, we saw some, some really cool stuff and pretty crazy how some of that's come to fruition. You know, some of the, uh, the electronics or some of the things that they used. And I will say being in Chicago, I, at the time I lived three blocks from Wrigley field when they won the world series in 2016 unbelievable uh one of the, the best things I've, I've been a part of in my life but um so going back and forth between the first and the second one i mean it, it really it probably like you it changes for me I, I feel like every now and again it's it's hard to discredit because the first one and when you meet the cast and you meet the storyline and you see what's evolving in relationships um but the second one there's just so much going on uh that it's hard not to have that be my favorite uh, just again because they going back from uh into the first movie is just uh, i can't imagine anything more well written and and produced it's just uh, to me it, it's still like i said it, it blows my mind yeah i i think that back to the future one is perfect right like there's nothing you can nitpick about it and i and that's not even coming from like even if i wasn't a back to the future fan like i am i mean i think that if you objectively watch that first movie it's hard to say it's not the most fun and perfect film ever made but uh, I agree with you on part two. Part two is so good, and the the and and like a lot of great trilogies. If you go to the first three Indiana yeah, Jones movies or the original Star Wars trilogy, that second movie is always a little bit darker. And I think sometimes and there's a lot of dark moments, especially in that 1985, the alternate 1985, the Biff horrific time period. That um yeah. that I can understand why people are like, oh man, it didn't feel as fun. But the payoff that you get in Back to the Future three. Um, is so so good and and tell me if you agree with this Jason I'd say that to people who don't like Back to the Future 3 that it's actually the most similar to Back to the Future 2 in the regard that you have Marty and Doc stuck in the past trying to figure out how the hell they're going to get back to 1985 with only the 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 uh, technology of the time like I feel like that's like the most uh, 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 similar story to Back to the Future 1 don't you think? Yeah, I agree. I even, I mean, I, I work with one of the guys I work with. He was his his children are now watching it, and he was kind of going through it. And he said it was fun watching his children say, "Hey, look!" And that's the same guy from the manure truck. From and they're watching the third one, they're like, "Hey, wait a minute!" And they're picking up these little things that have kind of carried over, uh, you know, from from just from each the first and the second one. And it's I the third one is just fantastic as well. I mean, it's such a it makes you feel good. You know, it's it's nice and bright and sunny and. Uh, you know, you're seeing Marty McFly's, you know, family from when they first moved to America, and, uh, and then obviously Mad Dog Cannon, and who just, you know, Tom Wilson is such a phenomenal actor, and he's funny. I had a chance to see him at a comedy club outside of Chicago several years ago, and the guy is just drop dead funny. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of people don't, I don't think, give him enough credit or even know. You know, there's another side to him. It's not the Back to the Future side. It's the Tom Wilson side. And the guy is just so brilliant. Uh, particularly in all three of the movies, but the third one, you know, it just, it ties everything together, marries everything really well. And you know, to me, I'm, again, I'm biased. It, there's never been a better trilogy. There never will be a better trilogy. So it's so funny. I had a conversation earlier today um, about this. I think that it's the best pure trilogy of all time. Now people are going to say, Oh, what about star Wars? What about Indiana Jones? What about this? What about that? All those other movies have, uh, or all those other trilogies have, you know, entries into them now. You know, there's the fourth Indiana Jones. There's going to be a fifth. There's the prequels of yep. Star Wars. There's the, the the new sequel trilogy. I think the only other pure trilogy that you can put up against Back to the Future is The Godfather. And then that's one where the part three didn't live up to the first two. 
uh, in my estimation, with The Godfather. So I really do think Back to the Future is the best pure trilogy ever made. It's the most fun. And that Back to the Future 3 was great. And 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 in 2, like when they go to the future, I'm with you. I wish they would have spent a little bit more time there. Um, it, it, it was cool how many things came to fruition. I'm sure that was a great moment for you in 2016 when the Cubs finally won the World Series. Um, for me, it was a good moment in 2017 when the Astros won the World Series up until, I guess, <laughs> recent events. Uh, but banging oh. on trash cans aside, uh, th- 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 I'm sure that was a, a really fun thing for you to be a Chicagoan. And there was all, and th- wasn't there like something Thing, and you'd remember better than I, but wasn't there some kind of numerology that played into Back to the Future 2 and the Cubs? It was like 103 minutes or 103 years since y'all won the World Series. Wasn't there something like that out there? It was, yeah. It was like 102 years, 103 years. And it's funny because, you know, in the movie, it was supposed to be 2015 when we won. And the Cubs had a really good team in 2015. I mean, we made it through the postseason uh, quite far, as a matter of fact. And once it got to the playoffs, uh, there are several people with, you know, DeLoreans that, you know, the local news had them in front of Wrigley Field with a DeLorean, and people were dressing up with as Marty McFly and the hoverboards. And uh, in the Cubs, they had these T-shirts with Doc Brown in you know, 2015. And it, it all kind of, kind of, you know, it was like, oh, my oh my gosh, this, this could happen. And how ironic, how ironic is this? And I think they even reached out <clears throat> to, to Christopher uh, Christopher Lloyd and said, you know, would you would you consider throwing out the first pitch if they made it to the World Series or you know, saying the seventh inning stretch? And he, of course, uh, is a consummate professional. So, of course, I would. Are you kidding me? Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen in 2015, but in 2016, uh, we got the job done. Yeah, yeah. It was one year off, but hey, I mean, you still made it. And it was, it was within the, uh, the, the margin of error, we'll say, for that. Now, the Back to the Future series is one that near is near and dear to a lot of the fans. We we love it. We don't want it messed with. We don't want it touched. Uh, but yep. of course, we know in Hollywood, eventually something might occur. My my question to you is my, my my thinking of this has changed in the last year, especially when I was going through the process of writing the book. Uh, my my opinions changed on this. But how would you feel? Where do you stand on a potential Back to the Future remake or reboot or sequel? It's a double-edged sword with me. I, I, I'm sentimental. I think the older I get, that's just how I am. Um, I know one of the Bobs is either Zemeckis or Gale, and I think it gets misquoted often because you see it go switch from one to the other. But I think it was Zemeckis who had said, over my dead body, right, that there'll yeah. be another Back to the Future. And I, I've got I posted a picture of back in, I think, 91 of, of all of them holding up a shirt that says, no Back to the Future 4. Um, so do I think one will happen? No, but again, money talks, uh, you know, and not to say that they're, it's about money or anything like that, but you know, if it was something that is just so out of this world, uh, you know, too good to be true, can't pass it up. Um, and if they had the right storyline, you know, could it be good? Yeah, I, it could, they can make anything great nowadays. I think, um, it would just depend on the story. Maybe, you know, Marty watching his son or daughter, travel or find maybe the blueprints for the DeLorean and you know I'm no writer but they, I'm sure they could come up with something I know Christopher Lloyd's been quoted as saying he would he would be happy to do another back to the future but um part of me says no I I, I love it how it is right now now if there's some kind of a spinoff I would probably be more open to seeing that than uh, back to the future force so well if it was something like a spinoff maybe a Netflix series kind of how the karate kid uh which is a phenomenal series by the way uh, I was kind of I was kind of surprised at how well that was so if there was something similar to that, I think I would be more open to seeing something like that than a than this part four. You know, so I, I agree with you pretty much. For me, I was always against it, and then my opinion changed when I saw the uh, the all female cast Ghostbusters. I'm not exactly sure what the subtitle was. I think it was like Ghostbusters Answer the Call or something like that. I saw it in theaters, yeah. and I was watching it, and I walked out of the theater and said. Man, that was not a good movie. Like I didn't like it at all, and uh, and <laughs> yeah. then and then I'm like, oh man. So I, I was like, I gotta cleanse my palate a little bit, right? So I was like, I went back when I went home that evening. I popped in, boom, Ghostbusters. I'm gonna watch the original Ghostbusters to forget about that movie that I just saw. And when I was watching the Ghostbusters, I realized, hey, I still love this movie. And the movie that I just saw in theaters didn't take away from my love for this film. So I'm saying that to say, if they were to make another Back to the Future movie. And I didn't like it. Well, I still have my three Back to the Future movies. I, I, I don't, I don't lose anything. I still can have that love for those three. But if they make a Back to the Future four, they do a Netflix series or they do uh, a spinoff or what have you, and it's awesome. 
We now have more Back to the Future in, in our lives. I have more stuff to talk about and write about. You have more stuff to post about. <laughs> we have more conversations it's to true. have. And it's, a gr- it's great for everybody. It's more content. And people are, I'm telling you, people are craving more content. And it's never, it's never been more true than obviously than looking at my, my page and, and how many followers and people that are just into conversations and, and, and posting. And I think you had a really good insight to that. And that's not something that I've actually thought about, which is great hearing, you know, thinking about, you know, if, if you were to see something that you don't like that's affiliated with that show, and then you went back and you said, listen, it's not the end of the world. You know, I've still got, I've still got the movies that I love. And I think I would, I would still be the same way. I'm just very protective of, you know, that Back to the Future name. I'm, I don't want it to be tarnished in any way. But again, if something was to come along, and as long as I think, as long as either Bob Gale or Robert Zemeckis or both of them were involved in it, I don't see any way uh, that it wouldn't be good. So now, let me ask you this: Do you have any? You've talked about your travel plans to Los Angeles. Do you have any travel plans to go uh, across the pond to check out the Back to the Future musical? You know, I I do have a lot of friends in England. Uh, I've I've been fortunate enough to travel to England quite a bit. Unfortunately, with planning for the wedding, I have a lot of travel planned for the next kind of six months. So, uh, as of as of right now, it's not in the cards. Um, I do know I would I would probably you know have uh, pretty easy access to tickets if I wanted to. Um, unfortunately, as of right now, no. Uh, and I will give them a lot of credit; they've done an amazing job um, so far. You know, with the little snippets that they've had with rehearsals and things of that nature coming out, I think they've done a bang bang job with the cast. And there was a picture posted I think yesterday, the day before. Uh, Robert Zemeckis, Bob Gale uh, are there kind of helping out uh, with things. Um, I don't know how long they're there, but you know, just kind of had them over their oversight, uh, their opinions. I think uh, there's no way that that musical is not going to be amazing. So um, if I don't get a chance to go over and see it, I'm hoping that uh, certainly there's some videos of it um, and, and possibly even some, some cast interviews or, or whatnot that will come out of it. So, Yo, absolutely. I mean, I think that, yeah, I saw that picture too. It was a, uh... Bob Gale, Bob Zemeckis, I think Alan Silvestri. Um, Alan Silvestri, correct. Yeah, was, was in it, and it was just, it was one of those cool things to think that, because I knew that Bob Gale w- w- had been pushing the uh, the Back to the Future uh, musical for a, a, quite some time. I think that they've had plans for it for over a decade, or or, or at least it was in the, the idea stages, and for it to finally be coming now in 2020, uh, and we're just, I don't know, a couple weeks away from the grand opening, and to see all three of them there working on it, it was really, it was really cool, and 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 you think that they nailed the casting? You said you like the Marty McFly, we like Doc. I think they've done an amazing job, and again, I, I'm no actor. I've never acted a day in my life, um, but just seeing all the videos and the snippets that they have come out, and you know, they've they've posted who's playing what, and just going on their social media and, and kind of doing my own due diligence and seeing kind of how they are and how they sing and how they act. I think they've done a phenomenal job, and again. I, I'm hoping this is a precursor to maybe uh, the United States getting a musical or back to the future musical, I'm hoping maybe this is a test run uh, for how it may do over here. You know? So um, again, Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis give it their stamp of approval. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think that they can swing and miss on that one. Now, the thing about back to the future that I think so many of us love is that those movies are so rewatchable and they're rewatchable for, for a number of different reasons. But a lot of us love to, point out the little easter eggs the things that change the twin pine mall to lone pine mall and find those was there was there anything when you were watching these on repeat viewings that, that stood out to you where you're like oh man i love that they just put that in there oh uh, i don't know I, that's a good one actually the lone pine the twin pines i mean even to this day i know i'll find people that had no idea they're like oh wait a minute you're right and it's like wow how did you not notice that but it's just of course maybe you wouldn't notice that if you're just not paying attention or it's just one of those things you wouldn't think about. I don't know. I I think again, I'm biased. I just love the movie and I'm still to this day sometimes finding out new things. So maybe I just, how things were done or small things Uh, like on the, on the chalkboard in the, in the second movie, dangerous Bob literally wrote his name, dangerous Bob on the corner of the chalkboard when doc Brown is talking about the alternate, uh, you know, years and if you look really closely in the bottom you'll see dangerous bob written same as in the first movie uh you know when marty goes to school and the school's all spray painted you'll see dangerous bob if you look really closely he was a prime master i did master, not know so. that wow i did not yeah, know that little things like that yeah that's crazy um yeah i mean i think i i haven't seen anything that you know detailed i you know i definitely have seen like 
you know, the Eastwood Ravine is, is, instead of Clayton Ravine and, and the small ones are, that, that, you know, have been widely reported. But that, that, I think that's what I love about the movie is even, I think, in the 2015, Doc had a shirt on that had, you know, I think like either trains on it or cowboys or something like that. Something to, you know, yep. foreshadow the, the Western that we would experience. Now, here's, here's the thing. You, you talked about the time machine, that the A-car that, that Joe Walsh here um, helped rebuild. And there's the Out of Time documentary that's out there. Um, Steve Concatelli, who yep. directed it, was on this podcast. I mean, just a great documentary. Um, which is which of the DeLoreans is your favorite? We've seen a lot of different variations of the DeLorean. You know, you see the the plutonium chamber, the Mach One, as I call it. You see the Mister Fusion, the Hover conversion, the White Wall DeLorean, the Old mm-hmm. West DeLorean. You know, which one of the time train? Which one is your favorite? It had to be the second one the, with the Mister Fusion, and I think. While I don't currently own a DeLorean, and um, it sounds like I probably will here within the next two years. Oh, yes, wow. I do plan on. Inter- yes, I'm excited. The, the the future wife's given me the permission, uh, so you know there. And I've gotten to forge a pretty good relationship with Mike, uh, who runs DMC Midwest. It's probably a 40 minute drive, so I've been in there quite a few times uh, to kind of see their. You know, they've got like 30 or 40 DeLoreans in there, most of which are are being serviced and whatnot, but they can also help you find a DeLorean for what you want. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very specific. And another just kind of small thing that people don't realize is there's several people out there that will build you a DeLorean time machine if you've got the money. It's not cheap. Uh, Bruce Colum being one of them, Colum Enterprises, he's a, an ex-NASA engineer, lives down in Florida, does a fantastic job. Uh, then another guy in Texas, Video Bob. But there's also been people, you know, throughout the years that, that have been building these cars just on their own in a garage, finding parts. And to me, the second one, I think always, you know, anytime I've ever been around a DeLorean time machine replica, uh, and and it's maybe the first one, people are like, oh, where's the, where's the, where's Mr. Fusion? So I think that one probably gets the most attention. And to me, I've kind of always liked that one. That's always been my favorite. Um, And I think probably a lot to do with the Mr. Fusion. I I just love that aspect of it in a flying, I mean, a flying DeLorean, as Biff says, a flying DeLorean, Uh, you know, it's, I think it's just fantastic. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I, I you know, I I actually really love the time train, um, but I think that the yeah. the Mister Fusion uh, DeLorean is, is is the best of the bunch. I, I similar to you, um, only thirty minutes from where I live here in Houston, there's the DeLorean headquarters. Uh, it's in a, a suburb of Houston called Humble, and I've got to go up there and meet Stephen Wynn, who owns DeLorean now. Um, and they the first time I walked into their showroom. There it is, a DeLorean time machine replica from Back <laughs> to the Future, and which, by the way, re- they recently sold it for eighty eight thousand dollars. But um, it was it was just so cool to sit in it, turn the time circuits on, you know, see the, yeah. see everything, and see the flux capacitor at full flux. And I got you know when, yeah. I, got the, when I got the tour of the of the uh, headquarters or of, of their of their of their uh, DeLorean headquarters, there they had boxes that they had purchased. When Stephen Wynn and everyone you know acquired DeLorean, they had boxes that they purchased from the original factory, and some of these boxes were shipped. They were still unopened, and they were shipped from West Germany, which isn't even a country anymore. And I'm thinking, wow, like that's it's crazy to think about the history of the DeLorean uh, as well, and how really it's lived on, you know, through through Back to the Future. Without Back to the Future, I don't think that we ever see the DeLorean again. And 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 I'm sure that since we're both big. Back to the Future fans will agree that the, the DeLorean is the greatest movie car of all time. Uh, but where where do, where do you put it? Where, where, who who's like two and three? If you had to say, like, is the Batmobile up there? Um, is James Bond's Aston the Martin? Original what would you Batmobile, say? yeah, yeah. Uh, the original Batmobile is up there. The Michael Keaton Batman uh, car. Not oh, so I shouldn't call that the original. That's uh, not, not the '66 Adam West series. But not the George Barris. No. Yeah. Not the George Barris uh, DeLorean. I like the, the Michael Keaton uh, Batmobile. I think that thing is just uh, is just wicked. I love I love that car. Um, you could probably look in TV series. I think the Kit car is, is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got that big, you know, red, you know, like uh, going across. I, I think that's a cool car. Um, there was never really into the James Bond cars. I mean, all Aston Martins are amazing cars. I was just it kind of predated me uh, a little bit. I just. I don't think there's ever been a time for the most part that a car or a vehicle was also a character in that movie. Um, yeah, you could say obviously the, the millennium Falcon in star Wars is, is certainly a, uh, a character in the movie, of course, but, um, 
I just think there's something about that DeLorean, that, that gorgeous stainless steel car. Um, uh, it, to me, it just, it invokes just happy memories. And, and, you know, you, you don't see them out in the wild. I'll call it very often, you know, but even now, like I said, I'll, I'll go into the DeLorean Midwest and I'm like a kid in a candy store. I'm like, this is trouble. You need to get me out of here right now. Because, <laughs> yeah, <you> know, yeah. <laughs> it, it's bad news. And, it, and it's been, again, I've met so many, so many people that own DeLoreans and uh, just stock DeLoreans and now, you know, the, the replicas. But there's an amazing group on Facebook. It's, it's DeLorean Time Machine Builders. It's people who, all they do is talk about how, you know, acquiring parts, whether it be the uh, original parts that were used on the, on the, on the A-car, uh, which are very extremely hard to get now uh, because they were old, you know, aircraft parts from, you know, like 60s and 70s or whatnot. Uh, but people who manufacture their own parts and sell them to help other builders and other people who are turning their car into a DeLorean time machine. So we have so much more a wealth of knowledge and um, more things at our disposal nowadays as Back to the Future fans or, or if you have a DeLorean and are wanting to turn it in, you know, into a time machine. You have so many more you know, resources now than you did even 10 years ago. Uh, there was a, a website called uh, bttfparts.com, back to the future parts.com. Um, if you've ever remember that, it's it's not um, alive anymore, but uh, there was a guy named Gary Weaver uh, the third who was fantastic. Um, he used to do, again, a lot of uh, builds back in the day uh, before you know things were as, as, as common, I guess, if you want to call it common, as they are nowadays. So, Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it is crazy to... And, and what's weird about the DeLorean is it still looks like a car of the future, Right, like it for some reason they nailed it. It doesn't look dated to me. Maybe it, maybe I'm in the minority there, but it doesn't look dated to me. Even when I see one, because I got to go out there. I, don't, I guess it was like a week and a half ago to take some of the uh, promo pictures for the book coming out, and uh, some that you've graciously posted on your uh, social media platform. And even still, just to be standing, I was in full Marty McFly regalia, standing you know, <laughs> in the same pose that he did in the in the in the poster. And I was like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? How am I? How am I having these experiences from these movies? I'm, you know, living out a, a fantasy. So I, I definitely agree with you that I, I would like to own the DeLorean one day. Um, you know, it, maybe it's in the cards, maybe it's not. But I, 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 I'm happy that you get to live out that that fantasy that oh, so many of us get to uh, or have wanted to here in the in the near future. Um, a couple more things before before I let you go here, and and really again go yep. to go to Back to the Future HQ on Instagram. Is is it all? Is it B T T F H Q on Twitter? Yeah, on Twitter because it's too long. It's B T T F H Q. Okay, just want to make sure I got that right. And um, when yep. we talk about these movies, there's so many side characters, right? I mean, aside from Biff, who I do think is the unsung hero of the entire trilogy. Uh, and one of the greatest, you know, portrayals of a villain of all time. Just there's seven different variations of the Biff character that we see throughout those just three movies. And Tom Wilson does such a great job of of you know just tailoring his performance uh, in such a way to to accurately portray those different versions of Biff. But um, who are some of your favorite side characters? I'm, I'm not talking about George and Lorraine and Marty and Doc and Biff. Anybody outside the big five? Who are some of the ones that you like? Do you like Match 3D and Skinhead? Do you like Marvin Barry? Uh, do you like... Uh, who, who are some of the side characters that stick out to you? Marvin Barry is obviously a good one. I, I, Donald Full of Love, who, who plays uh, you know, uh, Mayor Goldie Wilson... I think he's uh, I think he's fantastic, and, and he also does a lot with the Back to the Future community as well. He's just above and beyond as gracious as it gets. He was always one of my favorites too. I just love you know, mayor. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I could become mayor. Uh, you know, and, and how you know even in the 2015, you know, you see that I just absolutely brilliant writing um, and producing and. Um, yeah, he was always one of my, one of the, my favorite characters there. Um, other than again, Crispin Glover played an, just an amazing job in the, in the first movie, and uh, Leah Thompson, over the moon, fantastic. Um, but yeah, I, I think if it was going to be anybody, it would probably be Donald Full of Love, who who uh, is the actor who played um, Mayor Goldie Wilson. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree with you. He's he's got to be way high on the list. Um, I also love Einstein. Einstein and Copernicus are up there for me, but even though they're not, oh, gosh, yes. roles, I got, I got to give love to the, to the dogs of back to the future. Um, but yeah, Don, I mean, but that was one of the things I think that, that, that it's so great about the movies is they, they got everything right on the casting, 
right? Like everyone hit right. Now I know that they originally you know cast Eric Stoltz, and that footage is still yep. out there. And I know uh, Bob Gale has hinted that maybe one day we will see that. I'm kind of somewhat hopeful since it's the 35th anniversary. Maybe we'll see a little <laughs> bit more of that footage because it seems like every five yep. years we're getting a little bit more at a time. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful. Yep. But even 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 if not, they they cast that movie so fantastically and so beautifully. And uh, Crispin, and, and even when Jeffrey had to come in and pick up where, where Crispin left off and try to um, capture George McFly in a similar way, um, I, 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 like so many people, I didn't even realize that it wasn't Crispin Glover for the longest time until I was, until I was much older. Yeah, I mean, and I know they, they yep. did that intentionally to disorient you or what have you, but uh, that, that was um, uh, really great. They just, they just cast the movie throughout. I also love Old Man Peabody. Even though it's a small role, I just I think that you know I think you actually just posted something about Old Man Peabody too um, the other I day. I did this morning. Yeah, this morning. Okay, yeah, I, I remember seeing that, and I think that he's another one. But um, now you you've hinted at some stuff that you have coming up, of course, um, here in the in the near future that you you can't speak on just yet. But what what can we expect as followers of your pages uh, going forward? Do do you look to do more? Do, are you gonna, you know, do video? Do, do I mean, what are you, what are you looking to do in the future with with Back to the Future HQ? Yeah, I think you're gonna continue. You're certainly gonna continue seeing, you know, uh, the, the the content that I'm I'm currently putting out with is just you know funny memes, um, back to, uh, behind the scenes photos. Some of the I've uh, been getting into a lot of the uh, the old school commercials and anything I can get my hands on. Uh, you know, from back then that I can that I can post, but I would certainly say I'm hoping that to maybe uh, you know get some more interviews, some videos with some of the cast members, and even possibly work with uh, with Stephen Clark in the official Back to the Future page. Um, I think that would be fun as well. I think it would be a good collaborative effort. You know, in this community, there's no one person. You know, I, I certainly will never look out on another page or be like, oh, they're terrible. You know, we're all in this because we love Back to the Future, and it, trust me, there's several, there's there, there's a lot of other Back to the Future pages um, that do a fantastic job. So you know, when we and you know, we're all kind of bouncing off each other. You know, well, maybe they'll send me a picture, I'll send them, I'll post a picture and give them credit or whatnot. So it is a collaborative effort. We're all in this together. But I think you know, I, I would like to to, to get cr- progressively better when it comes to posting content because people are, are certainly craving for content. Um, so again, maybe some interviews with some of the cast. Some of the things that people have never seen before, and then and then again, maybe maybe possibly work with Stephen Clark in the official Back to the Future page. So, time will tell. We'll see what the future holds. Yeah, yeah. Well, the future is what you make it, Jason. And uh, I think that you and Stephen <laughs> would, would would be great together. I mean, once again, what what? And even though it, it, sometimes it may not seem like as as significant, but I think that you posting daily about Back to the Future just keeps that brand out there. It keeps the movies out there. It keeps reminding people and fans all over the world why we love and appreciate these movies and why we have for now 35 years uh, in July, which is crazy that the 30, it just felt like the 30th anniversary. Now we're at the 35th anniversary uh, of the films. It's absolutely wild. And, 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 and I'd love to have you back on the podcast uh, here soon. Cause I think that we have, we just scratched the surface in greatness of back to the future, but we're here uh, going in on an hour. So Jason, I appreciate your time. Let the people know where they can find you, follow you and, and all that great stuff. Wonderful. I appreciate the time, Brad, and good luck again with the book. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And it's, uh, it's Back to the Future HQ on Instagram and, and BTTF HQ on Twitter. That is Jason. Uh, we'll be right back with more Back to the Future podcast. And there he was, Jason from Back to the Future HQ. I want to give a big shout out to Jason once again for taking the time to come on the show. And I think that I, th- I love talking to Jason. So I, I, I told Jason after we wrapped, I'd love to have him back on, you know, on a, on a semi-frequent basis because the guy loves Back to the Future the same way we all love Back to the Future. And again, not to harp on it too much, but your boy is trying to sell a couple books. So go check out my book, Back from the Future, a celebration of the greatest time travel story ever told, available on Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble, or you can go to backfromthefuturebook.com, link in the show notes, and... In the show notes, you can find Jason's social media channels so you can connect with him and follow his great page. And, uh, you know, leave him a comment. Let him know that the Back to the Future podcast sent you over there. Uh, and we can keep growing this thing. I'm going to be back next week with another brand new episode of Back to the Future, the podcast. So until then, I will see you in the future.
What have you done now? Now? Now?